In today's lesson, we're going to be learning all about video animations. So basically, we're going to take all that we learned so far, effects, elements, transitions, titles, and see how we can animate those layers on top of our videos. This way you can make an effect or filter temporary and you will have more control over how it looks over your video. With video animations, we can fade graphics, fade overlays, and just have more control over how those layers look on top of our video. So let's get started and see how we can do that. The first thing you need is a video. So let's head over to stock media and get a footage that we'd like to use. I will use this video. You can get the same by looking for the following tags. Let's drag this into our timeline. So my objective for this video is to turn it from day to night using color correction and filters. So if I were to just grab a filter from the effects menu, let's try to find something that's blue. Let's actually try to make it look like there's a sunset. So if I have this video, you can see it suddenly appears. But this is not giving me the right result because I'm getting a Winnie effect on the edges. And what I want is just the colors turning colder because you get colder colors at night. I cannot double click to keyframe and I just have limited options for these filters. So that's where video animations come in. And since I want to create a realistic night uh, effect instead of something like this, I have to do it with the video instead of a filter. What I mean by that is that we need a cold effect tailored for this video specifically because it doesn't look good on my video. You can see it doesn't look that realistic. So let's delete the filters and instead duplicate my video. Let's duplicate it here. There we go. And then I will place this on top. Make sure they align perfectly. This is very important. And now I'm going to turn off the layer below, the visibility. Let's lock it in place. And we're not going to do anything to the layer below. We're going to keep it exactly as it is. Double click the top video and head over to color. You could use the settings here if you'd like to do a quick color grading. Or you could head over to advanced and work with advanced color tuning, which is where I want to go. Go to adjust and we're just going to use what we learned to make this video colder and darker, just like how it would be if it was nighttime in the video. Let's start with color, lower the brightness, bring the before and after so you can compare. This is before, this is after. We want to add contrast. We lowered the brightness and increased the contrast. This is the after, this was the before. Let's decrease the vibrance, leave the saturation be. Let's head over to light, where we're just gonna work with the little details of the video. Shadows, you wanna darken them. Let's, in let's increase highlights, leave the rest be. Uh, you don't need to touch HSL, but what you need to do is head over to white balance and just turn the temperature towards the colder side. Like so. Maybe add a little bit of purple to cancel out the green. Then you can go back and readjust the brightness. All right, hit OK. Now this video looks like it was shot at night. And all I have to do to uh, make it go from morning to night is bring the bottom video back, keep it locked, head over to animation, and we're just going to gradually introduce this new video on top of the original video. Head over to customize and choose when you want the video to turn dark. I'll choose here. Add a keyframe and then go back just by a little, reduce the opacity to zero. Then you can just work with the second keyframe to adjust how slow or how fast you want this to happen. Play this back. You can see it's slowly becoming darker and eventually it just turns blue and dark. 
so now it's nighttime. You could add some cricket sounds or even darken the video as you'd like. I'm just going to leave mine like this. So you could stop here and then maybe fade it to black or fade it to day again. You can just go forward, double click and make a keyframe first. So from here until here, it remains night. And then you can make another keyframe where it's zero. So it's back to morning. Something like this. It fades to morning. You can just work with the speed of this animation. Let's hit OK. Delete these. And look at another example. Go to stock media and I'm just going to look for lamp. I will use this video. You can get the same video by searching for these. And what I'm trying to do here is turn on the light because when you play it back, let's mute the video. The lamp is turned off, but I want it to be turned on. So I will use a solid color and some blending modes to make that happen. Head over to my media, sample color and choose a color that you'd like the light to have. I will use orange, drag that on top, match the duration, double click on your orange video and just scale it in. To cover the screen, we're going to work with the size later. Head over to compositing and we're going to change the blending mode. As we learned, there are different categories for blending modes. And since we want it to be lighter, we need to go to the light category. So if I go to dark, you can see it's not giving us a good result. And if I go to the combinations, I'm still getting a bad result. So I would have to go to the light category. And I will choose Linear Dutch because it gives me the brightest result and I want that glow. We will work with the opacity later. Just hit OK for now. Go to Effects, Utility, Image Mask, directly on your color. There we go. Double click, Video, Effects. And we're going to choose a circle. We just need to work with the X and Y and position it on this lamp. A little bigger than the lamp and we just want to increase the blur strength. Increase the scale X and Y so it looks better. I will make mine like this. Hit OK. And now I have this on top of my lamp. Before, after. Now we just need to make it realistic. Double click on your color again. You could also use the mask options here. Really depends on what you're trying to do with the video. I think I'll go with this one. Just delete this. And head over to mask directly, choose circle. And this time, because I could add keyframes to my mask, I would have more options. First of all, just blur out the edges a lot. And change position X and Y. Work with the settings until you have something that looks natural. I would suggest increasing your blur strength so that you have a intense color at the center and it fades out at the end. So you don't want something like this. You want something that's a little like this. And you can work with the scale. Try to keep it at a good size. You don't want a big color because then it won't be natural. You want something like this. Make sure that the lamp is at the center of your color. There we go. There we go. Now hit OK. And we have a color right now, but it's not glowing like a lamp would. So we're going to head over to Effects. Go to Default and search for Glow. Until you get this um, effect, drag it directly on your color. And now it's glowing. Double click, go to Video Effects, and you just want to work with the amount of glow. You can work with the radius and the opacity. We want something more natural. Somewhere around here would do. I will keep mine like this. Hit OK. 
Go back to your mask and readjust it so, so it looks good. Hit OK. And now we have the base of our lamp. This is before, this is after. So now the light is turned on. And you could leave it as it is or just uh, maybe add some flickering effect if you like with the keyframes. I'm going to trim both of these short. Click this button. There we are. Let's go to effects and search for flick in the film stock effects. Let's see which one looks better. Double click to see to see the effect. Let's try this. So it is flickering, but it's just way too intense. Keep around 10% opacity. You can drag the flash white too onto your color, and then you can get this flickering effect. And now my light is turned on. You can change the overall opacity of your color by heading over to video. Video, basic, and then come down to compositing. And just work with the opacity if yours is too much. I'm going to keep mine at 100. All right, now let's go back to mask. And because the light is flickering, I'm going to make it just turn off at the end. Right around here, I will make it slowly fade out. Head over to animation, add a keyframe at full opacity. Go a few frames forward. 73. And then back to 100. This is the first error. It fades out and then it comes back in. We can do this a bunch of times to make our lamp kind of lose its power. All right, the second time and then the third time it will just fade out completely. And then the electricity goes out. And now I have created this effect. You can add some sound effects if you'd like. I'm going to leave mine here. Now let's look at a final example. And we're going to be taking a look at a new feature called Audio Visualizer. This is a new feature in the latest version of Filmora 11, 11.3. So if you want to use this feature, you would have to update your Filmora and access this new feature. For this one, we're going to need an audio. So let's head over to the audio menu right here and select any of the songs, drag them onto your timeline. So I have a music right here. And the problem is that when we're listening to this music, we're not really seeing anything. And that's where the new feature comes in. Instead of looking at a black screen when you're listening to this song, you can look at a visualization of the beats. Head over to Effects and scroll down to Auto Visualizer. Make sure you are in the film stock option. Click this once and you have presets to choose from. Download any of them. I will grab this one, drag it right on top. I'm going to double click and before that just extend the duration. Play this. This audio visualizer is looking for the song in order to move like that. So if we just turn this off, mute the music, play this again, you can see we're just getting a circle because there's no audio for this effect to use. Turn this back on, play it again. And it's going to move with the audio, more precisely with the beat of that audio. Now for all of these effects, you have some options up here. The first one is intensity. You can change how intense those lines are by grabbing the slider. You can also change the opacity of the entire effect. Change the radius of the circle. Change the position X. And position Y. You can also change the gradient color. Click on any of the colors twice and you're going to get this window where you can just change the gradient color. 
I will make the first one red. And you can just double click on any and change the colors. Just like I'm doing here. Once you've chosen your color, you can grab any of these sliders to adjust the blending length. The longer the space between the two, the more blending that's going to happen. The less space between the two, the less blending that's going to happen. If you don't want this many colors, you can just delete that one point, select it once, and then hit the trash icon. And now we're getting four colors. Drag the sliders as you'd like, and you're going to get a result like so. So that's the first visualizer. We also have other shapes that are not uh, circles. Let's delete this and grab something else. Let's grab the wave, drag it on top of my song, and now I have the same result. It's going to move with the music. If I mute my music, it's going to be a flat line. So you're going to need some sort of audio for this to work. Let's bring this back. And for each of these presets, we have different options. Again, we have intensity, the opacity of the effect, the scale X, scale Y, rotate Z, position X, and position Y. Again, we have the same gradient option as we did before, so if you'd like to change the colors, you can go ahead and do that here. Let's hit OK, and now I have another audio visualizer. There is many more to choose from. You can just simply click and drag it on top of your song, adjust it to the way you want, and export this. Now, instead of listening to this song with a black screen, I'm getting this really cool graphic that moves with the beat of my music. And that's how the audio visualizer works.